everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labacan with the Rocks and Stocks News website. Uh, we have another in our series of interviews with executives of junior mining companies that have put out good news. Uh, recently, a couple of weeks ago, I spoke with Robert Boyd from Endurance. And uh, since then, they've had actually uh, three good news releases out. The one we talked about on our, um, our around December 29th was that they had a 8.62 grams of gold over 24 meters. Then they followed that up with a January 5th news release that endurance reports surface samples between 7.01 grams per ton and 21.2 grams per ton gold from their Eagle South doubling the surface extent of the Eagle zone to 400 meters. And then today earlier, they had a news release out that um, endurance reports drill discovery of 15.7 uh, grams over of grams of gold over 24.8 meters, including 26.96 grams of gold over 4.1 meters on their Reliance proper, property. And that is their best hole uh, to date on the project. So great stuff, Robert. Yeah, well, well, thank you, uh, Alan. We're really uh, pleased with the, the results from this hole, uh, uh, especially since it's, uh, uh, I think the other important point was it's a 150 meter step up from the last drill hole. And that's the drill hole that we reported on December 29th, which had uh, 8.6 uh, grams or so over the 24 meters. So this hole now is 15.7 grams over 24.8 uh, uh, meters or so. So it's, uh, it's, it's a, a good zone that looks like it's continuing between there. And, uh, uh, and that's our first first step out that we rushed into this new zone called the Eagle South, which we initially picked up with soil sampling uh, and about 170 meters to the northwest of this current drill hole. We'd, we'd done some channel sampling in, uh, back in 2020 and got about uh, uh, um, six grams over 13 meters in a channel sample there, but our, we did some short RC holes under it and couldn't duplicate it, at least that kind of width. And so we thought, well, that's kind of interesting, but but it, it opened up this soil anomaly and we did a lot more work on that soil anomaly and, and extended that soil anomaly at Eagle South uh, significantly this uh, past year. <clears throat> and through that work on Eagle South and the extension of Eagle and the soil anomalies in Upper Eagle, uh, we've, you know, we really opened, uh, up the exploration potential with that uh, systematic kind of soil work. And then we put a drill trail in that up there because we wanted to get up and do some drilling uh, to the Southeast because our RC and diamond drilling had, uh, was demonstrating as in that December 29th hole that this system was still wide open to the Southeast. So those roads we put up uh, into Eagle South <clears throat> Uh, which is about a kilometer of new drill trails we put up there. We put our, have never been drilled before. There's never been any trench, trenching up there before. In fact, the results we reported in our press, last press release on surface sampling, uh, they're never, those had never been found before. Those are new outcrops, say, <coughs> new, new outcrops exposed in this, um, <coughs> with this drill trail. So we're really, uh, really encouraged by that. And so that's, that's uh, it was in those areas that we stepped in and, and put these uh, drill holes in. Uh, and 20 was the one we saw some pretty good and interesting mineralization over width. So we rushed that hole through the assay process. And we'll be now following up with an eight additional holes or up in that area that we're reporting over the next little while. Uh, that will uh, fill out the, the story a bit uh, as to what's happening in that area. But, but um, we're really pleased with this and it's demonstrating that this is a really strong gold system. We've now got it demonstrated just the Eagle zone alone is 400 meters of strike and it's still open to the Southeast. 
and that together with the uh, uh, diplomat zone and this discovery that we have the other discovery zone uh, uh, with a bit of history on it is the imperial zone uh, that gives a system that's 1.5 to 2 kilometers of strike length there and really we're only just literally just scratching the surface um, these drill holes uh, uh, are just tagging the zone right at surface for instance this good intersection you, we just reported today was just 33 meters down hole uh, at a minus wow. 55 hole so it's it's only about uh, you know, it's all, it's only about 50, uh, uh, it's only about 50, uh, about 50 feet or about a hundred, you know, just below surface. It's pretty shallow below surface. So, uh, <clears throat> so it just means that uh, we've now got a, we're all set up now to, uh, to get back and do a really systematic program of doing a lot more drilling to find, uh, drill out the system and understand which way the chutes are plunging. Is it still a shallow dip like the Eagle zone or does this zone have a steeper dip? Uh, and uh, th that's the kind of work we have to, uh, to understand now because we seem to be moving into a slightly different structural regime as we move from the Eagle zone into this Eagle South. So we, we suspect that the attitude of this zone is gonna be a little different. And that's why we cautioned in our press release that we don't really know the true width yet. But the interesting thing is is that this drill hole that we've got uh, is about 24.8 meters, which is pretty close to the last drill hole width that we got down at Eagle Zone, which we felt was a pretty close to true width and pretty close to the true width that we got on the Imperial Zone when we drilled down there 650 meters away and got uh, about a 24 meter intersection of eight and a half grams or so. So that, that seems to be a, con, a, a consistent number, that kind of width in the, in the district. So, or at least in this, in this property. Uh, and so we're, we're looking forward to, to exploring this and evaluating it because we think this, this has got a, uh, this is a system of substance and uh, it needs a lot more work and it's, it is an orogenic gold system. So these orogenic gold systems, as you know, have a lot of depth potential. Well, you brought up a few really good points there. I'll see if I can remember them and unpack them. The first one you said was about the um, <clears throat> about the soil anomalies. Um, you know, a lot of times, Robert, and this was one of my mentors, always said, you know, Alan, often the, the things get smaller when you go deeper uh, than what you see at the surface. Uh, and then... A lot of that was because in the old days, there was a lot of selective sampling, um, but now it's actually looking bigger. And another thing that it suggests to me is that you're able to uh, show what you're seeing at the surface in a drill hole. Um, so these aren't just wild arm waving about, uh, you know, a large area of surface anomaly. Um, you're now seeing it in the uh, in the deeper part, or yeah, as well, you get drilling. Sorry. Yeah. The the interesting uh, thing is, and the part of the reason we planned the road into this area was that we did have a soil sample that ran uh, two parts per million or two thousand ppb, which is really high for a soil sample in this area. Uh, all part of this Eagle South soil anomaly trend, which is about three hundred meters long. Uh, so it, it, we that that helped guide us into the area, but but that those are not soil samples are not reliable in terms of what kind of grade your system's ultimately going to have. You really got to get uh, rock samples, and then in, in this area, uh, there's cover. We've got, yeah, we've got a lot of gold uh, associated with with sulfides, and in this area, the sulfides get oxidized, so you get this really. Uh, orange colored outcrops of oxidized outcrops so it's hard to get a good good uh, channel sample in fact the little chip samples we did collect in that area uh, just above this uh, at what we call our e5 prospect we had about in one chip sample is about seven grams uh, 7.01 grams per ton over 1.8 meters and another one was uh, uh, 15 grams over 0.5 meters so not particularly wide, uh, but it did demonstrate there was gold in that system and, and, and a lot of poor exposure in between those samples. So uh, we're glad we drilled under this. In fact, we drilled this, 
this hole before we actually had those surface sample results. Uh, uh, and then uh, 150 meters away, we got the E7 prospect. And that's the one we actually got the wider width of 9.6 grams or so over about uh, two meter chip sample up there. And that zone isn't very well exposed either. So that, that says that this system's at least gonna go for another 150 meters uh, when we start drilling it up the hill. So another um, interesting point and an important one that you brought up earlier was that um, this is suggesting a very large, uh, powerful mineralizing system that's carrying high grade gold. Yes, and that's supported by the strength of the alteration in, in the area. Uh, we have very wide zones of iron carbonate alteration. Uh, iron carbonate sericite alteration seems to be the one that's more pervasive. Uh, and then, uh, uh, then we get the higher sulfide content often within those alteration envelopes. So there's a, there's a big alteration system here that's uh, purging a lot of fluids through this system. Uh, so it suggests uh, a, a strong mineralizing system. And, you know, one of the things that I'm always looking for when I look at high grade deposits, Robert, is continuity. Um, you know, trying to connect the dots when one's way over here and another one's way over here and then they get skinnier. You're getting some very strong indications of the potential for continuity. Yeah, that's, that's a good question, Al, because uh, I think if you look at table one in our pr press release today, you'll see uh, that we've got our wide interval there of 24.8 meters. Uh, and table one gives you a sample to sample grade of each one of those samples collected through there. And you'll see that every two meter or less sample collected through there runs anywhere from four grams up to 27 grams very consistent grade at the bottom of that hole, just about every interval for the bottom 15 meters is running. Uh, uh, I don't have the, the, the table. I do. Oh, so you're, you're talking about grams or something. So. starting at 3.3 meters or 33.3 .3 meters is seven grams. The next interval is five grams. The next interval, 18 grams, 19 grams, 17 grams, 11 grams. 14 grams, 26, 27, 6, 13, 16, 16, and 15. So, you know, what are you talking about there? 25 meters of continuous high-grade mineralization. Absolutely. And that, that's the point I want to make. And even within that, there seems to be a hotter, hotter zone of, uh, you know, the 20 6.96 grams or so that's over 4.1 meters so yeah and that's another thing Robert usually when you're looking at you know an ounce per ton type of stuff it's often over a half a meter or something there that's two hits of uh, you know averaging over 26 grams yeah and and I think it's probably because this is some sort of breccia mineralizing system and you can see some close-ups of the photos I saw that figure figure four. It it shows that it's probably a homogenizing alteration and mineralizing system because of this brecciation event. Uh, and so, um, so we're, for the non-geo out, out there, that that brecciation means that the yeah. rocks are all broken up nicely to allow those fluids to get in there. Yeah, and uh, but an, another interesting thing is that a lot of our gold. It, uh, and the sulfides related to the gold, which is pyrite and arsenopyrite, um, is often in those fragments as well. Um, so they're mineralized fragments. So it's not only in the matrix, it's, it's the actual rock that, that's, that's being altered is, is getting mineralized. So that's probably explained so the grade. So again, to the non-geologists there, what that means is the pieces of broken up rock are carrying mineralization as well as the the gaps in between those rocks. That's correct. Yeah, some that that would be uh, exactly the case. It's it, it and that probably explains the continuity of grade uh, from sample to sample. Wow, that's that's very impressive. I mean, 
you know, when I'm looking at 14 gram and up, I'm usually probably looking at a half a gram or half a meter to a couple meters. That kind of continuity is very impressive, Robert. Yeah, and it and it's it does speak to the strength of the system. And so that's why we we're we're pretty comfortable with this system as we start exploring it, it's gonna have roots and get bigger uh, and, uh, and and hopefully transition into some something different. We don't know, it might uh, transition into something narrower and even higher grade, or, uh, or it may transition into a, a, into a disseminate system. There's just so much work to be done on this, uh, but whatever it is, it's a strong mineralizing system and warrants continued exploration, which is what our plans are going forward and we haven't laid out our plans for the public yet, but uh, uh, we wanna get our results behind us first and start putting our plans you know, together for the future as we move, uh, move into, the, uh, into the next month or two. Uh, we'll probably summarize what our exploration plans are for the coming year. But, but we drilled about 4,100 meters uh, now with our, our, this past program of 22 holes. So we'll be at least doubling to, to maybe tripling uh, the meterage in, in the next phase of the program. And if we, if the logistics permit, we may try even go with a bigger program. Well, you know, speaking of that powerful system, these orogenic systems that are cracks in the earth that go way down deep, if that system is able to get that kind of grade way up at the surface, I mean, it's wide open as you go deeper. Yeah, well, uh, we are just 10 kilometers away from British Columbia's historic, biggest historic gold producer. And it's uh, probably about the same age as the same age and uh, uh, of mineralization as, as ours. It's just a deeper level system uh, at Bray Lauren. And it, it was high grade as well, 17 grams over the history of that operation and produced 4 million ounces of gold but it was in higher grade crack and seal veins. They did have the alteration as well, but these kinds of orogenic systems, as you get deeper, uh, the alteration gets more constrained to around the vein, the crack and seal veins, whereas up where we are, the higher brittle, where you get these breaches, you get wider alteration zones uh, and a different style of mineralization, which includes, looks like a replacement. <coughs> Well, you bring up another good point there, Robert, about the potential, and this isn't just pie in the sky potential, but often in these orogenic systems, as you get deeper, they kind of consolidate the zone and enrich the grade. Well, they, they, they could, yeah. And uh, we, we don't have any evidence of that on our project yet, but uh, because we haven't drilled deep enough, uh, we, we've got to do that drilling uh, really uh, the deepest hole in our property is down at the imperial zone, and I think that hits the zone maybe 200 meters uh, at depth uh, below surface. Uh, so it's uh, that's pretty shallow for the length of these kinds of systems that, that can go for kilometers at depth uh, uh, and have economic. And, and really, the only thing that limits the economics on orogenic gold system if the grades there is is the ability to to access and bring the gold to surface in terms of the, the operational aspects, cost cost of mining. Well, at those kind of grades, you're, you're looking pretty good on that, especially when you are uh, looking at that high grade really close to surface. So that has a way of uh, helping your economics if you have to go deeper. Uh, yeah. and. Um, you know, right right now we've got these wider zones uh, near surface. Um, oops. Um, you still there? So. Yeah, I'm not surprised your uh, your phone's yeah. ringing, uh, Robert. Yeah, I forgot to turn my phone off here, so. Uh, <laughs> no worries. So, uh, and it, it goes to my screen, so my screen pops up. Uh, I'm sorry about that, uh, but it's a busy, been a busy day on the phone today. That's why I'm, my, my, my throat's tickling a bit, so. Um, uh, I can so, completely understand, especially, um, you know, the market reacted nicely to this news as I think it should. Um, 
there was another map that you had i figure one um it shows the drill hole intersections so 03 04 06 20 it shows the geo or the geochem anomaly i think that's a really good map for people to really start to grasp and the next figure figure two to start to see this impressive uh continuity yeah the 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 the, the first figure one uh, shows the three different balloons of, of the soil anomalies we would have, have one's the eagle south, the other one's around the original eagle zone, and then there's this upper eagle soil anomaly, which we haven't explained yet. So it's probably another more discoveries to come. Uh, and to is that going that up the hill? Yes, we call okay. it the upper eagle because uh, there is an elevation change that goes upwards as you go southeast on this property. So... Uh, uh, so, um, uh, so the up that soil anomaly that's up the hill, it's up the hill. So that means it's it's sourcing up there somewhere rather than from below from the Eagle Zone or Eagle South. And so uh, we still got to explain that upper anomaly. So uh, we've now in part explained the Eagle South anomaly, and and all of these seem to have zones that go with them. So. In that upper anomaly, I think you would call it E7, that you got a 12.9 gram per ton gold hit on the surface sampling. Yeah, yeah we, we had, um, there was a, a grab sample that uh, ran 12.9, and then there was a chip, chip in that same area that included the area where that grab sample was that ran uh, 9.66 grams over about two meters uh, uh, a chip sample, and then, that was most some of this oxidized rock primarily, but then there was a little vein area or a silicified area in there that had stibnite with it. Uh, and that's the zone, the zone we took a grab sample on around about 12 grams. So uh, the purpose of that kind of sampling is to benchmark your system. It's not <clears throat> representative. We'll have to go back and do really good channel sampling up in this area uh, to get great over width. <clears throat> and then we can use that to, uh, together with any drilling we do up uh, under Eagle 7, uh, not Eagle 7, but E7, uh, that E7 target up there. Any, uh, that requires a lot of drilling uh, still, and that'll all be part of our program coming up uh, this year. So I, Sorry about that, Robert. I have myself yeah. on mute there for a second. Yeah. Um, so the other, so, okay, you've got the uh, two maps that are great and help people understand the continuity of from uh, as you go down the hill. Then you've got that uh, table with the great uh, distribution. Uh, and then there's some rock pictures that uh, show that broken up rock and the kind of grades that you're getting in that. Yeah, uh, the, the, the first one was figure three was a, a photo of the core. Um, uh, it was a photo of the core uh, that we collected. Uh, and uh, within that, uh, then in figure three was some selected pieces of the core that show the, the brecciated or broken up rock, but it's not really broken up. It was broken up once when it was being mineralized, but it's actually pretty competent rock for drilling. Uh, we get good core recovery when we get down into this uh, unoxidized stuff uh, uh, away from the surface. So uh, it's good. Um, it's a good zone. And you can see in that the, the consistency of the sulfide mineralogy uh, through that full 24 meter interval. It creates the gray color in the core photo in figure three. Uh, and then the, you see the grayish uh, color uh, of the uh, pyrite, uh, arsenopyrite and stibnite. Stibnite is probably the one that has a tendency to make the rock look kind of steely colored. Uh, that, that's uh, that's uh, what uh, contributes uh, uh, to the mineralizing uh, event uh, throughout that interval. So. Wow, you know, Robert, you, it really looks like you guys are onto something quite spectacular here. And uh, I, I don't mind mentioning that you still have a very modest valuation. Um, and then you consider the infrastructure part of the story too, because you're 
what, four hours from uh, Vancouver and you got a road right beside you. Yeah, it's a four hour summer drive from Vancouver and uh, you can year round access onto the property. Uh, we're only four kilometers uh, from Goldbridge. Uh, so you can walk to the pub at the end of the day if you want to. So, uh, but uh, we prefer not to do that. It, uh, <laughs> we work pretty hard, so we don't end up being in the in the pub uh, as much as we'd like. But it's there's uh, you know there's not many. Uh, I can't say there's a Tim Hortons, unfortunately, uh, no well. Hortons in Goldbridge, but uh, but it's uh, it there is a. Uh, you know, we're close to the, the the town, and that's what's surprising about this is this 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 discovery. Uh, you know, was there waiting to be found, and and people didn't recognize it because of this sulfidization event. There's not a lot of quartz veins. Plus the cover, there's a cover issue there. Yeah, there there is a cover. There's some of this late ash that uh, from Mount Meager that blew up about 2,400 years ago and drops this ash over the property, which makes it complicates things even further in terms of so it wasn't sticking out like a sore thumb uh no there the, the alteration was obvious in outcrops but alteration uh you know prospectors uh, will go to those rocks and if they don't get gold out of the rock in the alteration then that or they don't see a vein to follow them uh so so the uh, but one but typically, they'd have to start panning, and then when you get into this ash, it, it becomes difficult trying to follow a zone by panning. That's what the old timers would have done in this camp uh, back uh, when it was first discovered in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. Well, it's a hell of a story you got going here, Robert. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I, uh, I guess all we can do is say stay tuned. We're going to have a busy year of, uh, of, uh, of exploration, uh, following up on what we've got here, uh, and uh, doing a, a drilling program, uh, probably a lot more uh, other types of geochemical uh, programs to explore and hopefully open the system system up. Because we and now have... you're going in it with a more targeted uh, game plan because you have more data, truth machine yeah. data. That that's right. We you, you know a, a big part of our program this year will be uh, focused on drilling. Uh, for sure, because we need to start getting that three-dimensional aspect to this system now. So uh, pending, what do you have pending, Robert? Is there some more holes pending? Um, uh, we've got, um, uh, there's 11 holes to report. Eight of those holes uh, are up on the Eagle Zone, uh, and another uh, three of them are down on the Imperial Zone. Uh, so when I say Eagle, that means the Eagle area, which would include. Um, uh, On that 400 meter strike area. Yeah, that's correct. Right. Uh, within all within that area and uh, several of them are around this hole number 20. Uh, so those will be interesting uh, uh, to see what the results are of those. Uh, and two of them uh, are a little further uh, to the north of this drill hole. Uh, but look like they're up. They, we we have provided guidance on a drill section that that we probably those are holes are probably going to run for gold. And I think we talked about that in our last discussion. The holes eighteen and nineteen. Okay. Like and up, up dip on that zone that we we talked about in hole number six uh, on December 29th. Okay. So and then um, when might you ballpark get back in for more drilling? Uh, well, uh, at, at this point, uh, we'll probably be fully disclosing our results by mid uh, mid February, we think, or maybe late February. And uh, our our plan is to be back in, and uh, um, uh, we we should be able to get back there and drill starting in April. That's that's where we we were in with an RC drill drill rig uh, last April. Uh, it there it has been a a snowpack year, so we're not sure what the snowpack's like, uh, and that that can change between now and March. So, uh, so uh, we'll see. Uh, but we think that the uh, that, that there's every possibility of being being back there in April. So it looks like you're going to have some pretty good continuity of uh, newsful. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, we'll uh, there's there's uh, you know we we're gonna. Uh, 
we'll be starting up once we start out the program uh we also beat the rush too in terms of northern exploration activities so you get pretty good turnaround in the spring uh, at the labs uh, which we did uh, this year uh where it got slowed down was in the fall when everybody uh in the north and, and jammed in Golden triangle and other places like that were generating core and, and assay results uh, uh, so that's when the labs got backed up Okay. So yeah, we should be able to get start turning around uh, results pretty quickly once we start back and drilling in the new year or uh, in the in the in the spring. So spring, Already early spring. Now. Yeah, so yeah. Okay, Robert, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, thank okay. you very much for uh, coming on and talking about the uh, results. Well, my pleasure, Alan, and uh, uh, let's uh, keep in touch. Well, hopefully, we've got more to talk about uh, in the next. Uh, month or next few weeks so okay give me a couple minutes to wrap it up here robert so there you go folks um this is a high grade discovery and often when i'm looking at high grade discoveries as i mentioned to robert i'm looking for continuity of the high grade and uh, we were able to talk about that continuity and they show it in their uh in their tables uh, of the continuity in the drill hole and then the continuity between the holes and the continuity of the uh, geochem. So this is, is, as Robert says, it looks like a very powerful high-grade gold mineralizing system and they're really just getting started on this and they're already hitting very high grade right pretty much at surface uh, and uh, you know if you really want to get excited go do a little research on orogenic gold systems and these these cracks in the earth they go way down to the upper mantle that make the conduit for these high grade fluids to make their way to surface and that's exactly what it looks like they have here so um, you know then you you have it with a road access um, this is a very special project in the making, and uh, I think it's going to lead to a lot of high-grade gold hits, and we'll have a lot to talk about in the future. So as always, my shows are for information purposes only. It's important for you to do your homework, speak with your financial advisors, and I do recommend you to go look at those last few news releases and take a look at the, the maps take a look at the table of results and take a look at the drill core itself because all of these things are indicating uh, the, the potential uh, that they could have something very big here. So on that note, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.